Welcome to the Success Sensei Podcast for anyone interested in success, happiness, and balance. We'll teach you how to be a black belt at life. And now, your host, former professional fighter, multiple world champion, entrepreneur, and investor, Robert Devan. Bowing in. This is Roundhouse Rob, the Success Sensei, helping you to win at life one kick and punch at a time. And today we're talking about your acres of diamonds. So acres of diamonds is a story that was uh, developed as a lecture by Russell Canwell. I think that's right, Russell Canwell. Hang on, I'll have a look at my notes. Conwell. And thankfully, I had notes. Russell Conwell. I don't know who Russell Canwell is. Russell Conwell, and he was around back in the day. Uh, it was published as a book in 1890. I think he was born 1821 or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, but he did uh, the lecture uh, regarding the Acre of Diamonds. He delivered it to over 6,000 times around the world. And back in the day, that was definitely a large feat. And uh, so he must have been one of the original motivational speakers, uh, one of the first motivational speakers. Um, so the Acres of Diamonds stories, a lot of people haven't heard the, Acre, uh, the Acres of Diamonds um, fable. And a lot of people I've met, even though, even though Mr. Russell Conwell was delivering it to beat the band back in the day, um, still a lot of people nowadays haven't heard of it. Those, I, even though it's well written about, uh, people I meet on a regular basis go, no, I've never heard of it. So, And it's something that crops up all the time because it's a very, very good fable. Um, there's loads of different versions of it. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I might have my own little tweak on it, but there's a lot of different. But uh, I still think it's very true to uh, modern day society and it's definitely something worth reflecting on. Now, most of the time, I will completely ad lib all of these uh, podcasts because um, a lot of the time I don't have the blog written in time. By the way, did you know I had a blog? Um, make sure you check out the blog. I think it's the Success Sensei or else successsensei.blogspot.com. You'd think I'd know what the domain was, but I actually have forgotten. So um, what you do is you just Google uh, the Success Sensei and it will come up. But it's definitely, it's a blogger website. So I think it's blogspot.com, successsensei.blogspot.com uh, or else it could be the Success Sensei. I, I can't remember that. Um, smooth i like smooth. when things are smooth um and everyone always thinks that everything is always sorted and everything runs smooth and everything is perfect and really behind the scenes it's not like that at all anyway back to this so yeah i've actually gotten the blog written before i've done the podcast this week so make sure you check out the blog and i'll actually refer to my notes a little bit because i have them in front of me sure i may as well because i've wrote i wrote i wrote them so i may as well refer to them um right so i've already told you about russell conwell uh the next bit right okay the story this is this is my version of the story so basically a wealth a wealthy farmer heard about the riches that could be had from diamond mining so he dedicated his life to search for diamonds as you do he spent all of his money traveling and purchasing land, machinery, and labor. It consumed all of his time and energy. He neglected all of the relationships in his life, of course he did, and he blew through every possession he ever owned. So the farmer died broke and feeling like a failure. What a miserable story. But that's not the end of the story. It was a totally different story for the man who bought his farm. He accidentally discovered one of the largest diamond finds in history right there on the farm on the land. So that's the Acres of Diamonds stories, story. Now, what does the Acre of Diamonds story mean to your life? Well, basically, it means number one. Of course, I had these in pointers. Of course, I wrote the blog in pointers to make it easy to relate to. Open your mind. So sometimes we're focused on the area, on one area that we cannot see further options. So that is why, why it's important to talk to other people that aren't directly involved in whatever emotional problem you have. And we do have emotional obstacles in place. So you know when people come to you for advice and you're able to give them 
what you think is good advice and they're happy with the advice as well because you're not emotionally involved in the subject matter. Whereas when it's you and you could be involved in exactly the same scenario and you can't think clearly due to brain fog, you can't actually decipher what's what's the best course of action. But if it was someone else, you'd be able to give the, the that advice. And that's because you are emotionally charged by the subject or the people that are involved. So sometimes it's very important to open your mind and realize that, you know, there's many different ways, there's many different op- options. You look with a kind of a, a wider lens at the world and see that there's, there's a lot of different ways to do things. Um, it is all the way you look at things. And looking within is the best start. That was another smooth transition because that's actually the next point. Look within. So I have taught martial arts my whole life. Um, I don't know, I'm always going on about it because <laughs> the success sensei can only relate it to his own life experience. Um, I've always believed that everyone can fight. So I believe that everybody is already able to fight. There's one that not everybody believes that, but it's something that I do believe in. And for me, it's about bringing out the fighting spirit that's already there and connecting it with an improvement of physical movement. So I'm simply developing what's already there in my students. And that's what I believe. So I bolt on the techniques and self-belief is definitely something that you have to instill in your students to get the most out of them. Um, So when you're looking within, a lot of the answers are already in you. You're happier, here's one for you, your happier, healthier, more successful self is already there on the inside. So you are better than you think and stronger than you think. So going back to the acres of diamonds, dig your own back garden first in your pursuit of a brighter future. There's one to think about. So back to believing in yourself, that's the next point. Self-belief will give you the confidence to pursue the things you want and to develop into the person you wish to be. If you open your mind and look within, then you'll be on the right path to self-belief. So if that is slightly a little bit too confusing or you need a quicker confidence boost, just remind yourself that if you see other people are able to do it, then so can you. The same is even stronger. The same point is even stronger if you look at people and you go, if those idiots are able to do it, then why can't I do it? Um, It might be slightly negative considering people to be idiots, but I know it definitely helps. And that is one that got me my driving license. Um, I was thinking, I'm never going to figure out this driving lark. I'm never. I was late enough getting my driver's license. Um, Well, I suppose 21. It's probably not not late enough for this in this country, but in other countries it will be older. Um, So I was 21 and I was thinking, I can't figure out this, you know, manual clutch and accelerator. And I just looked around and I realized that every idiot on the road has gotten their driver's license. All the bad drivers, all the crap drivers, all the crazy drivers. And that's when I decided to myself, if they can do it, I definitely can. So hopefully that helps you when you're when you're trying to believe in yourself. Uh, capitalize on your strengths. So every one of us has things that we're good at and things we're bad at. Being honest with yourself can help to increase your self-awareness. Self-awareness can help you to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. So concentrate on using the things you're good at to improve your life and to try to become better in those areas that need work. Um, Do this for long enough and you'll have a large arsenal of skills. So that's a real martial arts kind of way of life, a real martial arts code that equates to all aspects of life. Um, Obviously, find out what you're good at, concentrate on what you're good at, by being honest, if you have to meditate to do it, if you have to ask other people to do it, but go through the process of figuring out what your talents are and accentuate the positive and make the negative into a positive. So the last one that we'll do is kind of leading all, all these lead on one to the other. It's amazing. It's almost as if I, I'd written it that way. Um, educate yourself further. So further education. And sometimes even the word education can put a lot of people off. So I mean, just studying, just learning, learning. You know, it doesn't have to be like third level education, go back to academia to um, uh, further yourself. Education is the same as digging your own land for diamonds or even acquiring more land for your farm. Education comes in many forms. So it could be listening to podcasts, watching vlogs, reading blogs. And when you continually study, you will further develop your skills as well as adding new ones. So just like the acres of diamonds, the grass isn't always greener on the other side green with envy maybe Uh, focus on yourself first 
So that makes sense. Look after yourself first and then focus on helping as many people as possible. Even from a business point of view, that makes sense. If you can help as many people as possible and genuinely help them solve a problem that's in their life, obviously you're going to profit and benefit as a result as well. So it makes sense to help as many people as possible. This will lead to a more successful and fulfilling life. I don't think I stretched the truth there at all. Um, that's very accurate. I hope you discover lots of diamonds. And I just wrote this point and just to, just to remember that a diamond doesn't look like a diamond in the rough. It's not polished. It doesn't look like the finished article. It might just look like a dirty stone or a dirty rock or a dirty lump of coal. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out what the, what the diamonds are that you're already sitting on. I hope it's helped. Uh, as always, please let me know if you think I'm right, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm well off the topic. Uh, let me know. I would love to hear your input. All reviews, all comments, all suggestions, all criticisms, all likes, everything is appreciated. So email me, message me, message me on Facebook, Instagram, go through the blog, go through the podcast, go for the vlog, YouTube, well sure you get it. Um, thank you for listening. I'm Roundhouse Rob, the Success Sensei. Life is a fight you can enjoy and win. Bowing out. This has been the Success Sensei, fighting the winning fight. So add us, subscribe, like, and comment. Keep those hands up and keep moving forward.